Hey everybody, today Rado runs through ugly Christmas sweaters. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, then welcome to Christmas, everybody, or it's almost Christmas. Just three weeks from now, everybody's going to be ripping open their presents and finding they got some ugly Christmas sweaters. And that means we players are trying to knit as fast as we can over three weeks or three rounds to make as many sweaters as possible. So I'm going to be the first player. Let's start out that way. And before we get going, there's a little bit of setup we've got to do. We've got these three... I don't know, sweater trends and fads that we have to determine uh, because apparently there's a big, exciting knitting world. And right now, for this first week, green is the trendy yarn color. Everybody wants green, all, th all other things being equal. That's going to help us in the trick-taking portion of the game, which we'll get to in a second. Next up, we have to shuffle a little bit more, deck number two, and we discover... The number one, size one sweaters are the perfect fit. So that's even more important when it comes to the trick taking. And finally, we have the actual sweater making itself. And uh, at the beginning of the game, purple sweaters are a fad, as are snowmen. That's what all our friends and loved ones want to see. Purple sweaters and snowmen because there are potentially three or even six bonus points per sweater to be had if you can follow the latest fad. Okay, also, I said friends and loved ones, let's meet some of them, shall we? As part of setup, everybody gets a secret Santa card. And so I... I pulled Uncle Thomas, who wants a sweater that has uh, two trees on it, or two. Each sweater is come is has a bottom, a left, and a right. So of those three portions, uh, two of them have to have trees. One of them has to be green. And hey, what do you know? Green is trendy, although uh, snowmen and purple are the fad. So Uncle Thomas, he is way out of the times. So anyway, that's my secret goal. Jen has a secret goal as well, but we'll keep it secret for now. Okay, and then the last thing we got to do is shuffle the heck out of this yarn deck because these multi-use cards will be used uh, for trick-taking and also to represent the portions of the sweaters that we can actually knit. So we'll shuffle it up a little bit more, and then four cards are drawn. One more shuffle, one more shuffle, just for good measure. There we go. Four cards are drawn, and these are going to be the first four cards that we are trick-taking to try and snag. Ooh, two purples, a green, and another purple. All right, interesting. Now, the remainder of the cards, they just get split between all the players. And unfortunately, since I'm playing a two-player game, that's going to take a little while. I forget, there's like 24 cards here, I think. Something like that. So this is just going to take a little bit. And I'm already starting to wonder, why didn't I just do all this setup before I started playing? Because now I got time to kill. But we're almost there, folks. Boom, boom. Here's Jen's uh, deck of cards. Here is my deck of cards. And I start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A starting hand of nine cards. What do I got? Okay, I got some reds. I got some green. I got some yellow. More red, more red. Oh, all this red. Only one purple. Uh, I'm not being particularly trendy at the moment. But hey, right now, these are not the cards I use to make my sweaters. These are the cards I trick take with to be able to snag these cards to actually make my sweaters. And all things being equal, I would say of all the sweaters out here, this is the best one because it's purple and it's got snowmen. So this could be uh, the beginning of a very valuable fatty purple sweater. So I want to get that. If I only get, well, I'm going to get two of these. Uh, I should say at a three or four player game, everybody ends up getting one every uh, trick. But in a two player game, I'm going to end up getting two. I want that one very much. So I would like to play the high trick to be able to ensure I get first dibs during the draft. Now, how do I do that? Well, remember, there were these two cards. Right now, green is trendy. A perfect fit is one. That means... If I had a number one, which I do not have, it would be considered uh, the card that beats anything. Even if somebody else played a 12, which you normally think would be the high card, ones beat everything right now because they are the perfect fit. So, unfortunately, 
Unfortunately, I have no ones. Next thing to consider is green is trendy. So all things being equal, greens beat other colors. So for instance, a green seven would beat a red eight. Um, so if I really want to go first, I probably want to play a green. But you know what? Jen's got nine cards too. So if I really want to ensure, maybe I just go on ahead and play my highest number card, my number 11. Um, I mean, the only thing it could be, it would be a 12. And now it's not trendy. So that means a lower value green card could still beat this. But here's the thing. The first card that is played in a given trick, that determines how everybody else has to follow. And what that means is because I'm going to play this, it's a, uh, again, it's a red candy cane. Uh, that's R for right. It's the right shoulder. Well, it's really the left shoulder, but from our perspective, it's the right shoulder. And it's a candy cane. Every other player has to now add to the trick by either playing red or candy cane cards. And my hope is Jen does not have... Well, I'm hoping she doesn't have any ones, so she can't beat me. And I'm hoping she doesn't have any green candy canes, because she could beat my 11 with a green candy cane or a 1. Or a red 12. But there's only one of those. So what are the chances she's going to get me that? Let's go ahead and draw her 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Her starting hand is... And of course, I don't know anything about her hand. <gasps> she does have a 1. But she can't play it. This, if Jen could play this, it would beat anything. She would be sure to go first. But... It's a green and it's bells. Remember, because I led with red candy canes, Jen has to play either red cards or candy cane cards. All right. Which means, with her starting hand, she doesn't have much she can play. Now, if she didn't have any cards that were red or candy cane based, then she could play anything she wanted. But as it is, because of what I chose, these are the only three cards from her hand that Jen can actually play this round. Okay. Right. So, with that in mind, what is she going to do? Well, none of these are going to beat my 11. So... Jen will go on ahead, I guess. She'll just try to play her best card, a six, and hopefully that'll at least get her second dibs, right? Okay, so uh, now, if we were playing with three or four players, then it would be the next player's turn to play a card, and the next player's. And everybody would play a card in front of themselves, and after everybody had played one card to the trick, we would resolve to see who won, who had the most powerful card. In a two-player game, each player is going to play two cards. So it comes back to me, and now I'm going to play my second card. And I'm limited just like Jen. I play reds, or I play candy canes. All righty. So... If I play this 8, I'm going to get first and second dibs because my 8 will beat Gen 6. Although I could also do it with this green 7. Although interestingly, remember, even if this were a 10, let's say, my green 7 would beat Gen's red 10 because green is trendy. So if I play this, I'm saving my 8 for later in case I need it. And hopefully I'm still winning, so I'll get first and second pick. Yeah. I like that. Okay, let's go with that. Let's go with that. All right. And so now Jen, well, remember she's got a whole hand of eight more cards, but there's only two she can play. And so her last card, well, Jen knows she can't beat me. She, I mean, and unbeknownst to me, I wasted this seven. I could have played lower. But so Jen can either play her five or her two. But either way, it's going to be the weakest card, which means Jen is going to get the leftover, the one that nobody wanted. So, with that in mind, which of these does she play? Well, she needs to think a bit more long term. Jen has a secret Santa card. It is Papa Charles. Papa Charles wants a sweater that's made of snowmen and red. So, Jen might want to go on ahead and play this too, because here's the thing. Right now, we're playing a trick to win these cards. After this trick is over, the cards we played will become the new set that we draft from in the next trick. So Jen could be setting herself up for the future because she knows she wants um, red. She also wants snowmen. This doesn't have red or snowmen. So I, and plus, it's a higher number that might help her in the future. So Jen's going to hold on to this one, I think. And so Jen plays her last card. Okay, so the tricks are over and now we resolve. And in fact, the game comes... With uh, these little turn order cards, that you're, because remember, you know, with more players, you'd imagine all these are in front of everybody else. We'd look around and say, okay, who won? Did anybody have a perfect fit? Nope, nobody did. Okay, is anybody green? Yes, then the high green wins. So 
I took one. Okay, so now, of these remaining ones, hey, they're all the same color. They're not trendy. They're not a perfect fit. So I took number one. I took number two. Jen took number three. And Jen took number four. So that's how we can mark who gets to go in order because all four of these cards are going to get taken. I get two, and then Jen gets the remaining two. Now, in a two-player game, we find we don't really need... We, we just need the one card to keep track of who's first. Also, because I'm the first... Uh, I've won the trick, I will have to play f my first card. I'll be the first to play in the next trick. So, which ones do I want? As I recall... Didn't I say this was the most valuable? Yes, because of that. So I'm going to take that one. And I do need green. Uh, Uncle Thomas's sweater needs at least one green. And hey, this green has snowmen. So even though it's kind of ugly, because remember, these are ugly Christmas sweaters, I could put these two together. And I'm starting to make um, Uncle Thomas's perfect sweater because uh, he wants one green and he wants two trees. Oh, no, he doesn't. He, no, it's snowmen. He doesn't want snowmen. This would be terrible for Uncle Thomas. But it would be good as a fad because it's got snowmen. If I can get all three of these to have a snowman on it, I'll score three bonus points. Every completed sweater is implicitly worth two points. But this could be worth um, five points if I get a snowman in the top right. Although if I look ahead, I can see no snowmen are coming because these are the cards we're going to draft for next. So anyway, do I want to take these? And then the second question is, do I want to put them together and knit them as one sweater, or do I keep them separate? Once I make that choice, it can't be undone. Hmm. There's There are other purples. But I mean, if I were to get, if I were to take this, well, I know Jen will end up taking both of these, so she'll end up getting those two bottoms. But that means on a future turn, if I get a purple bottom, then hey, I'll get two points for the sweater. And because I got three purples, that's three more points because purple is the fad. Now, sadly, I would not have matched my candy canes and my snowmen. But the thing is, you got to knit fast in this game because once a player has knitted successfully three sweaters, any sweaters you are working on are lost. All that progress is lost because the fads switch around and you got to start working on new stuff in the next week. So, do I go for this trying to chase the purple or do I go for this trying to chase the snowman? Now, in a perfect world, I'd like to get all purple and all snowmen, but there's no chance, there, there's no likelihood. I mean, if I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Well, actually, well, let's think about this a little bit because I know what's coming. I know what's coming. I know there's a purple bell coming that I could put into play at some point in the future, and um, and like a red snowman. Yeah, okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to pull off all the matching purple. Let's go for the snowmen. Um, because if I get three snowmen off of this thing, then I'll get three bonus points off of it. Although there's one other consideration as well. The numbers. Now, of course, the numbers had an importance when you're trick-taking. They have an importance for the sweaters, too. Because if you have a straight, like a uh, 10, 11, 12 you get two more points off of that sweater. In fact, here's a handy dandy little uh, reminder of all the scoring. Every sweater's worth two points. If you get a straight, you'll have an eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, or a 10, 11, 12. That's two more bonus points. If you meet the fad, that can be three or six more points. If um, on the non-fad colors, you can get all matching, that could be one or two more points. And then if it's a secret Santa, that's three more points to be had. So the perfect sweater can score you a lot. I will just take these, and I'm just going to try and make sure I get another snowman so that it's going to be a snowman fad, although it's going to be a little ugly because of the mixed mash of colors. Although, let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the other thing, too, I, I need to think about Uncle Thomas. Like I said, there's a surprising amount. This seems like a really simple, light little game, but there's a lot going on. Uncle Thomas wants two trees in a green. This has trees on it. It's not green. But it's trees. So I could go like this. Well, actually, no. I need two trees and a green. So that means I would have to get a green tree to put here to complete Uncle Thomas's need. I, I, I don't like my chances of that. I'm just going to go for this. These are the two, and I'm going to put them together as one. I'm not going to keep them as two different ones that I'm working on. So I'm working on my first sweater, which means I've left these for Jen. And so Jen has a choice. The, could, she could put these together as two sweaters, and hey, that's the beginning of a purple trendy one. And... If she gets a three, she'd have a two, three, four. That means she'd have a straight. So that could be another two points. But unfortunately, the trees and the candy canes don't match. So that's three points she's throwing away. Or I'm sorry, no, one point. Because right now you want snowmen. 
I think Jen will throw away two. Yeah, so Jen's going to take those two. She started working on her first sweater as well. And that was the first trick. Everybody refills. All right, so I should get two more cards to add to my hand, as does Jen. And because I won the first trick for the next trick, I've got, the first, I've got to play a new card, and now we're trying to get these. Let's see. And I, I, I probably want to get this green because I do need to work on another sweater that has green on it and trees, though. So, like, if I get this and this, hey, I've got one of the two greens I need. I've got trees, and then I just need trees. Or, I'm sorry, I need a green bottom. Do I have a green bottom? Do I know a green bottom is coming? Um, yes, I do. Because patches are wilds. Patches can be any side. They can also be any number and any suit. The only thing they can't change is their color. So I do know that I could use this to patch to make it the bottom. And then I will have made the perfect sweater for Uncle Thomas, which will be three more points. So anyway, I probably want to snag those two then to mix and match later on with this once I use it and then put it into the queue. All right. So, well... That means I would like to snag both of those. That means I'd like to play high. The perfect fit is still a number one, and I do not have a number one. All things being equal, greens are nice because uh, that is the preferred. I only have one green. It is this patch. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you look at patches, when they're played during the trade phase, which is the trick-taking, you uh, get to pick the previous card that was played. Whoever played the last card gets to... Um, this duplicates that. So... I don't want to play this right away. I want to play this after Jen plays a card. If Jen plays a really super strong, powerful card, and she thinks, oh, it's unbeatable, then I could play this and copy her. So I don't think I want to do that. Um, so what am I going to play instead? There's a lot of red out there. Uh, and, oh, there's a snowman. And if I get that third snowman over here, then I'll get the snowman bonus. So what the heck? I'm going to start out red. So, from now on, everybody has to play red or snowman cards. All right. So, that was my first play. It is now Jen's turn to play. And Jen would like to play her one because it's a perfect fit. But again, she can't do it because it's not red and it's not a snowman. What can Jen play? There's a snowman. A snowman, a snowman, a snowman. All right. Jen has no reds. but So, she has to play one of these cards. And... Hey, if she plays a green, it's trendy. This green six will beat my red eight. So Jen will play that. Boom, she says. And just like that, Jen is in the catbird seat for getting first dibs and taking the first player marker away from me. Okay, my turn. And now here's where I can get sneaky. I could copy um, Jen's, and that means this is considered to be a green. Coincidence. It's considered to be a green six with a snowman. And unlike some trick-taking games where it has to be the high card that's played, um, in this game, if you play the same card with the same suit, which could certainly happen with these, the tiebreaker is whoever played last. So in this case, since I played after Jen, I will get first dibs. Jen would get second dibs, I would get third dibs, and then Jen would get something else. Hmm, I've already forgotten what I really wanted. Didn't I want... What did I want? What did I want? I wanted. Oh, I wanted another snowman. I'm. Oh, and I can see this snowman is gonna show up, but it won't go there. Right. All right. Oh, was I thinking that this was gonna be? Oh, I was thinking this could be Uncle Thomas's sweater. Because it, if I put another green. Oh no. It, ah, I totally forgot what I even wanted. Anyway, so I'm gonna play again. So I could beat Jen with this, or if I don't want to play that, I gotta play Reds or Snowman. So I could play any of these cards now based on the follow. So if I want to beat Gen 6, I got to use that. Mm. Oh, that's right. I just wanted to get this into play so in the next round it'd be available so I could finish this sweater. That's what it was. But what? which of these am I going to want this round? Hmm. Well, there's no purples and there's no snowmen, so there's no fads out there. But still, just a completed sweater that has all matching colors. That's three points. And there's a 6 and a 7. Oh, but they can't go together. All right. All right. If I play this five, though, Jen's winning. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna I'm gonna get to go first. And if I, my first thing is to take this six, and then next round I can get this five. Look at that. I'm starting to make the perfect red sweater. Although it's not. Uh, I'll do that. I am giving up 
Jen, uh, right now, Jen is first. I am second and third. I might regret that later, but we'll see how it goes. And Jen gets to play one more card. And once again, they have to be Red or Snowman. So it has to be one of these three cards. And Jen could play this, and she gets to go first and second. The trend, green tumps everything. And then, of the remaining ones, Jen has the highest. So Jen would get first, second. I would get third and fourth. And I haven't really been thinking about what. how bad does Jen want to grab this stuff. Um, Jen would like to get another purple up here. So she can finish and have an all purple. So she doesn't want any of those. But if she gets first and second, she could snag this and this and start putting these together. So she could go for an all matching red. Or this and this for an all matching red. And uh, so let's not forget, Jen has a secret Santa as well. She wants two snowmen, one red. And there's no snowmen, but she does want red. So working on a red sweater makes sense. But... Not, these are not jumping out as Jen is absolute must-haves. So I think Jen is going to play uh, a weaker card. Wait, let's see. Oh, no. Jen has to play a snowman card, right? Because she has no reds. Right. Oh, yeah, it's one of these. Jen will just go on ahead and play her weakest card because she doesn't mind going last. She's saving other cards for later. Okay. So the result. Trendiness. Jen. Uh, or nobody has a perfect fit. Jen has trendiness. She is first. And then I am second, third, and Jen is fourth. All right. So Jen gets one, I get two, and then Jen gets one more. All right, and then these will become the new ones that we're going for. So what did Jen want? Um, Jen wants red. Oh, and Jen can see this five that I just put in. Everybody knows it. Jen's going to snag this six. And now she's going to hope to get the five. So Jen has gotten her first one. Now I get to take two. And I'm like, no, I put that five in for the six, and Jen has it. Let's see. Um, and this 8 doesn't make a straight to an 11. Ah, oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. The boot, boot, boot. But, but, remember, I need a third snowman. So this thing coming in here, that could be my third snowman next round. What do I want this round? Um, I'll go on ahead. All right. Uh, candy canes and snowman. Red and red. I'm not excited about any of these. Jen took the best card, which because I made it the best card. Well, I'll go on ahead and take this seven, because hey, if I can get the eight, then I've got the beginning of a ugly sweater straight. Sorry, right, I'll take that. And now I get to take one more, and then Jen, I leave Jen with whatever. Um, I'll go on ahead and take these candy canes, because hey, instead I could mix these and then get a continuous set of candy canes, which I've left Jen that. These are now the new ones we'll be uh, tricking for later on, and... I have to decide, do I finish this sweater? No, because I won't be doing my snowman. Um, so do I put these together? Because uh, remember, once I finish this thing, I'll get plus one bonus point if I can get a bottom that has candy canes on it. D does such a thing exist? Well, of course such a thing exists. Do I have one? No. I might have one deep buried in my deck. So do I keep these separate to go for two separate ones? Or do I... I, th I think I'm going to mix it up. I've, I am working on three sweaters now. i got three sweaters on the go. Meanwhile, Jen has to decide, is she going to put these together? Uh-uh. Because she knows she's going to try and snag that number five so that she can put them together. Uh, and this one can't come over here. So Jen is also, just like that, working on... We're both working on three sweaters at the same time. Um, right Oh, And... We are now going to continue. We uh, each add two more cards to our deck to make up the ones we played. And now, for the first time, Jen gets to lead. And finally, she can get the. She has two perfect fits. Wow. Although if she plays one, she can't play the other because they have they don't match in color or. So Jen wants to snag that. This is the absolute crucial thing. She must snag that. So and she has no wild cards. How is she going to go about doing it? Well, she could start out with this, and then, uh, you know, and if that keeps her in first place, great. And if not, she's got that to follow up. Here's the thing. She doesn't want to start with her perfect fit, though, because for all she knows, I've got a patch, which means I could copy her. So I think Jen will start out strong with a green 12. Okay, and so all of a sudden, I have to play greens or Christmas trees. So there's a green, Christmas tree, a green, and a Christmas tree. And unbeknownst to Jen, unbeknownst to Jen, 
I do have a patch. And so I will not remember. I was, I was going to use it earlier, but I saved it. I saved it for just such an occasion. Because here's the thing. Even if um, this, well, I mean, this, even if this doesn't work for me, I don't want Jen to have it because that could be the basis of a, of a, of a eight point sweater for her. So going first this round is a big deal. So because Jen played a green 12, I play uh, with, with, with Christmas trees. I play this, and this is considered to be a green 12 Christmas tree. Since I went next, I am winning. And then Jen says, nice try, pal. Boom! The perfect fit! Jen is still first, and now she's first and third. And now I've got to play one more card. And I can't believe she pulled that off. All right, so I can play any of these three cards. So Jen's winning, and then me, and then... So whatever I play, I'm going to go last. I'm totally going to go last uh, because I can't beat Jen's 12. So which of these do I play? Um, well, remember, I need to be thinking about what I want to get into play. I want... I'd like a red bottom for this. That's not bad. Oh, I. Oh, this is what I want to play. I'm going to play this so I can get into play because later on, if I put these two together, look at that thing of beauty. All right, so there we go. Everybody's played. And how did it work out? A perfect fit went to Jen. She is the first player. And then, um, and then for the rest, there's um, these are all trendy because they're all green. So we have to resolve numbers. This is a twelve, but this is also a twelve. So Jen's first, I'm second. Jen's third, I am fourth. And what does Jen want? Boom! Jen's going for the super sweater that I made possible. All right. So now I get one of the remaining ones, and I kind of want to grab one of these snowmen and finish this so I can get the plus three on fads. So, do I want the red or the orange? The color doesn't matter, except, well, I need to think about what I might want to grab in the future. Uh, let's see, do I have any red or orange sweaters I might make in the future? I do have reds. And I have a yellow patch. So, I could potentially uh, make some good stuff there. Yeah, okay, I'll take this. All right, so, um, what is this? Why is this here? All right, Jen took that. Oh, these are my... Right, these, these are the three sweaters I'm working on. All right, I'm starting to run out of room here, folks. I'll take this. And I'm just going to go on ahead. I don't have to lock it in, but I'm going to lock it into place now. I have finished the first of my three sweaters. And this sweater is worth two plus three more. This is a five-point sweater. It's not. There's no straights. There's nothing else. This is certainly, I think everybody would have to agree, a very ugly Christmas sweater. But someone's going to be super happy with that because this uh, this Christmas, it's all about those snowmen. All right, so I've completed my first sweater, two more sweaters, and the week is over, and then we do scoring. All right, let's keep that sweater out of the way. So Jen gets one of the two remaining ones. Um, let's see. Remember, uh, Papa Charles loves snowmen and loves red. So if Jen say goes for this... She can put this here, and now she just needs a red bottom. Doesn't care what it is, and Papa Charles will be very happy with this. She, she's still waiting for a purple for this sweater. So I think she'll take that, and she's going to snap them together like so, which leaves me this one. These become, wow, next turn, it's all green all the time. So i got to decide. This is a finished sweater. I can't connect it to here. Now, here's an interesting thing. Even though this sweater is finished, it's not really. Because one thing I can do later on, if I got a card that might make more sense, I can put another card on top of an existing one to get more matches. I don't need to do that, though. I could put these together, and boom. This is not a particularly good sweater. It's It won't win the fads, because it won't have three snowmen or three purple. It's, um, two, right. it's not going to be what uh, Uncle Thomas wants to see. Because I don't have a bunch of greens. But hey, the quicker I get them done, if I can get all the sweaters done before Jen finishes this, then incomplete work will get wiped away. This is a race. So do I start? And am I working on three sweaters again? Or do I get closer to finishing a sweater and try to run out the clock before Jen can finish her super sweater? I think that's what I'm going to do. So now, I'd, any bottom here, will be. this will finish my second one. And... But if, uh, but I, I, I might have to give up on Uncle Thomas's. Uh, oh, look, he's so happy though. Right, I need two trees and a green. But I haven't gotten. So I, I, if I put two trees on here, and I and oh, but this tree can't. This tree, these two. If I can get both of these next turn, those can be the two trees I need. 
All right, then I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and win both of these because these will go together very nicely next round. So I'm once again working on three trees. And meanwhile, let's see, what did Jen get? I've totally forgotten what she got. All right, she was, oh, she had these, right? No, no, no. She, right, she took that, put it together. This was the one. And so is she going to put these together or is she working on two separate? Hmm. Well, she's given up the fad of snowmen if she puts them together. But, oh, that's right, Papa Charles. He wants to also, all Jen has to do, she has her, just sees a snowman bottom. Does she know if there's any? Yes, and she knows there's a snowman bottom in her future. So she could finish like this, and Papa Charles would be very happy with that. So that is Jen's second one. So Jen um, now has three almost complete sweaters. None of them are done, whereas I've completed one and I've got, um, you know, okay. So there we go, and we are now starting. Uh, we have to refill our hand and get uh, uh, another purple bottom and another purple bottom. I end up drawing a, an, oh, and another patch. Very nice. And once again, Jen is going to be the first to play. Where is she going to go? All right. Jen still has perfect fits, and she has a lot of purple. So she could have a really nice one-two here. Okay, so she's got some greens, some yellows, and a whole lot of purple. And remember, purple is a fad. So Jen definitely wants... Well, Jen doesn't want to put any of these here. But even this green patch, um, when you put it in, you it can be any number you want it to be. So Jen could put this here and consider it a three, so she'd get the, uh, the straight, a two, three, four. But since it's not all purple, she won't get the three points from the fad. So Jen doesn't want any of those. In fact, actually, Jen doesn't care about any of these. Because she just wants bottoms. Because she just wants to finish these things. If any of these she gets, she's going to have to start a new... Well, next, that's true. This can be a bottom. And that would be... Um, this could be the snowman. Because these can be considered anything. So if Jen gets this, she has made Papa Charles perfect. So Jen does want to get that one. She kind of doesn't care, but she wants to go first. So I think, again, she'll play strong. She'll start out with this one. I'm going to have to make room. All these sweaters are taking up too much space. All right, there we go. Out of the way, sweaters. All right, so Jen plays a big number, knowing she can follow it up, and she's hoping I don't have another patch that I could piggyback off of her like before. And unbeknownst to her, I do. All right, so purple or snowman. So that means I have to play one of these, in it, including the patch I just got, because this patch could copy, and it would be considered a snowman. So, of these, which do I want? I would also like that green patch, I think. Um, let's see. No bottoms for this. This is already done. So, I could get this green patch and put it over here. So, I could be going for candy canes. I could put this over here. And it's just, I could just be trying to finish things as fast as possible before Jen finishes her super. And the nice thing is, what I don't want to do, do I have... Um, the red four that would, because if so, I'm never going to play it. I do. Unbeknownst to Jen, I have the red four that would finish her perfect sweater. I am never playing this card. Never! So she will not, although, if she gets a red patch, she could still finish that successfully. And, um, haven't seen the red patch yet, so it's out there somewhere, and I don't have it. Do I? No, I don't. All right, so that's interesting. So, do I... Let's see, no, it was this, wasn't it? Yeah, because they were all green. I kind of don't care about any of those, but I would just kind of like to run the, out the clock before Jen finds the red patch she needs for this one or the purple shoulder she needs for that one because those are going to be big scores for her. So, let's just go on ahead. Mm. All right, oh, and, and what does Uncle Thomas need? Oh, Uncle Thomas needs a green... Uh, needs a tree. No, I've given up on... Oh, right, Uncle Thomas, it would have to be this one because I would have to have a tree and a tree here. <gasps> I want this one because that's a tree. And then this could be a, considered a tree and I could finish Uncle Thomas. Okay, so I want that one really bad. And Jen wants that one really bad. Okay, so I do want to make sure I get that. Let's go on ahead and put this out. And just like that, boom, I've copied Jen and I've beaten her because I keep finding these lucky patches. And Jen says, well, boom again. Jen has another perfect fit. And so finally, what am I going to play? 
Um, let's see. I do not... Oh, and by the way, if Jen gets this in the next round, she can finish her super purple sweater and get fad. So Jen is also setting herself up for the future by putting that into play. All right, what am I going to put out here? Um, no bottoms. I already have that. All right, so I will just go on ahead. And I guess I don't mind going last. I'll just play the lowest card I've got. All right, there we go. So... Uh, perfect fit. Jen goes first. Then trendy. Oh, it's the lowest card I got, but actually I'm next because green is trendy. I forgot about that. Okay. Th so trendy is more valuable. I'm not going to use that one. That's actually more powerful than it would otherwise be. Let's just go on ahead and put this uh, uh, red. Yeah. Okay. Boom. All right. So perfect fit. Jen goes. Then after that, nothing is trendy. So now it's just high numbers. I beat my 11 beat hers. So Jen, me, Jen, me. Okay, that's how it's going to work out. Jen me, Jen me, and then these are going to go in. And Jen goes first. She wanted that patch to finish Papa Charles's perfect. Let's see. This wants two snowmen. She can she put snowmen on this thing because it's a wild. And it has a red. So Jen's going to get three. So this is going to be a five-point card. All right, a five-point. And Jen has finished her first sweater. And now remember, I wanted this one, and I already know I'm going to put it here because I'm trying to make Uncle Thomas a happy camper. And so now Jen gets one, and I get one more. Hmm. Let's see, and neither of them are going to help her. She could take this and finish this, but that would be kind of wasteful on that one. So... So... All right. Oh, these are what's coming next. These are what's coming next. All right. None of these really match up. So Jen can think about what she's got in the future. She does have a green bell, a green bell bottom. So what the heck? Jen will take this. All right. And she'll start a new sweater because she doesn't want to add it to that. She can't add to that one. She doesn't want to finish that one. And so Jen has left me this. And I can't. I can override. And if I do that. I have a chance. Oh my gosh, I've got it. Look at this upgrade. A thing of beauty. If I can find um, that uh, green nine, I could have a super sweater now. Do I have a green nine? No. It's out there somewhere. So I'm going to override mine and I'm going to upgrade this thing. Look at that. Okay. That is looking good. Bippity bop. All right, so these are the new ones. So I've got two almost finished. Jen, ha we each have one finished. Right. Okay. Jen uh, was first, so she's still first to snag these things. And, yeah, Jen wants that. She put it here so she can finish this and get three bonus points off of this lovely purple fad sweater. So Jen wants that. And I want this yellow patch to finish it. But, hey, a yellow patch is going to be good for anything, so we both want that. So you know, we get to draw two more cards. And how is Jen going to start off strong? So Jen has no more perfect fits. She has no patches. And so she needs to think about winning, but also about putting um, you know, future stuff into play. Like what was it? It was going to be this. But oh, 3 is not going to let her win. But she'll do it anyway. Because then she, she, she's limiting me and she can follow up with a 10. And before, she's led with her big high numbers and then I've copied them. I can't copy if she plays it later. So she starts out with that. We'll see how this goes. Okay. And now it is... All right, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So I have to play bells or green. All right. So I have to play one of these. I cannot play my purple patch. All right. I want to go first too. I want that yellow patch. So, I can just I can just boom a 12 cuz they match bells and that's going to beat Jen's 3 easy peasy. Let's do it. Let's do it to it, Pruitt. All righty. So that's mine. And now Jen says, "Hmm." And Jen says, "Hmm." Actually, her 10 can't beat my 12. Shoot. And she cannot play her 12 to beat my 12 because uh Jen was too smart for her own good. Now, the best this can do is give her second place. Drat. Or she has an 11, but the best that can do is second place. And here's the thing. If Jen puts this out, look what she's setting up. Uh, a 10, 11, 12 potential plus that yellow patch. Oh, my gosh. That could be a super eight-point sweater if Jen puts this into play. But I'm first, 
and I'm going to be first next round. So Jen is not going to do that. That would be too dangerous. So does Jen want to at least go second? Well, Jen, she wanted that, but she wants that too. So she wants to ensure she's second. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I totally forgot. Yes, I have a big, gigantic number 12. Doesn't matter. Green is trendy. Jen is still first. Oh, tricksy game. Tricksy, tricksy game. So if I want to beat Jen's three, I got to play a green five. Now I'm the first player. Okay, let's go with that. And then Jen says, oh, you thought you were first. You were not first. And so now, Jen is first, I'm second, Jen is third. Okay, and so now I can play one more. And again, it has to be bells or green. I have no green, so it has to be... Oh, oh I've got these as well. Right. Oops. I think I've mixed up my cards. Yeah, no, these are, this was my hand of cards. Right, there we go. That was my draw pile of cards. Bad me. All right, I will just follow it up. I'm getting the thing I want. Oh. I could play my purple. No, my purple. Yeah, I could. I could play my purple patch. No, I couldn't. Yes, I could. No, I couldn't. Because it would copy a tree. If I play this purple patch, it would be a purple tree, which means I couldn't follow it. So I cannot play that. Arg. Um, let's just play... Since I've kind of lost track of what my actual cards were now, so I've made a terrible mistake. Um, let's just say that I play this purple seven. Okay, and I've totally lost track of which were my cards and which was my draw pile. Oh dear, things are going off the rail, folks. Okay, so here we go. And um, there are three trendies. Jen has the highest, I have the second highest, she has the third highest. So once again, Jen me, Jen me. Okay, Jen... She wants this. But if she knows if she takes that, I'll take that. Whereas she doesn't know for sure if I'm going to take that purple. Because I have no use for that purple. But I have no use for any of these things. So. Wow. Okay. And she's starting on this. So she could get that purple at least and start working on another sweater. Hmm. Nope, she's just going to take it. Boom. So she has finished her second of three sweaters. Boom, boom. And this one gets plus three points because it's all the very colorful, very fashionable uh, trend. Right. And she's already taken care of Papa Charles. So now she just needs one bottom. Any bottom will do. And let's see here. Um, now I get to take one. And yes, I'll take this yellow patch because if I recall correctly, I have finished my second sweater. And that meant Uncle Thomas... He wanted to see two trees. I'm going to say this is a tree. He also wanted to see green. So there we go. So I finished two sweaters. Jen gets another one. She will. Well, what the heck? I mean, this is purple and it's snowman. It's a good fatty thing. And actually, here's the thing. Jen better take this because if she doesn't, I'll take it and I'll put it right down there. And, oh, actually, it doesn't matter. This is already all. But, I mean, I might set myself up if I can get the purple 10. So Jen's going to take this, just to keep it for me, and she's going to start another. It's going to be a very ugly sweater with no good bonus points. She leaves me this seven, which does me no good. And I, I, I'm not going to, so I'm going to start another one. These are the ones that come out here now. And uh, we draw two more. And I've totally lost track of what my actual hand is. Let's see, there's still one, two, three, four, five. Five more cards to be drawn. One, two, three, four. This must be it. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, so this is my draw pile. Here's my actual cards, I think. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, there we go. Okay, so fine. We're going to go with this. Jen is first again. Now, if anybody gets a bottom, and there are two bottoms here, um, if Jen finishes either of these or if I finish this. So this is going to be the last round because somebody's going to get that green 10. And... Uh, and uh, somebody is going to get this green three. And you'll put it over here. Jen would almost get bells. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. Jen puts it over here. Boom. She's got all bells. That's a bonus point. Okay. So let's just go through this really quick uh, just so we can. All right. So Jen is first. As long as she's first or second and gets one of these, she'll be happy because she doesn't want to. I mean, this is it. I think we're both going to finish our third, and then we'll do scoring. So what does Jen want? Again, 
She has no patches. She has no ones. She has no green. So Jen does not want green to be played. So Jen, what the heck? She'll, well, if she starts with this, then she limits herself to no more reds. Oh, but she does have a candy cane. If she had no more, then she could play anything. No, but she'd still have to play this three or this five. So she wouldn't be setting herself up. So if she, instead she goes for the nine and the 10, <gasps> the nine and the 10, well, no, it'll be too late to do that. So that's those are two high cards. So she feels pretty good. Yeah, okay. Jen will start with the nine. And all right, so. Hang on, two, three, four. So now I got to play uh, bells or purples. And boom, I'll just play my purple patch. All right, boom. And so suddenly I'm first. Jen is second. Jen is hoping. Okay, and now, um, if I have a green with a bell, I would beat all these other things, but I don't. But I don't. And I've gotten more mixed up with all these cards. Too many cards. It is hard to play for two players. Oh, I think I just gave Jen some of my cards, because now she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So I gave Jen some of my cards by accident. What the heck? It's just to get an idea, right, folks? Players in a real game would keep track of their cards successfully because they wouldn't have to keep track of four piles of cards at once while also playing strategically. All right, so let's just say this is my hand because I've gotten all mixed up. I have to play purple or bells. No, I, was it this one? Where are all my purples and bells? I have no idea where my hand went. No idea at all. I played that out of it. Oh, I think I just didn't look at my hand very much. What the heck? We'll say this is mine. And hey, because there are no purples or no bells here, I can play anything I want, which means I can play an 11, and it's trendy. And just like that, I think I crushed Jen's dreams. Again, I'm not quite sure because I've gotten all my cards mixed up, but you get the idea. Okay, here we go. Um, trendy, I am first. Um, and then, or perfect fits, no. Next up, of the remaining, no, Jen is second with her 10, and then my 9, and then Jen's 9. So, me, Jen, me, Jen. All right, so it works out that way one more time. Me, I wanted... I do not want to give her these bells, because that would be perfect for her. So I'm going to take that. Jen takes that. Where is this better? Oh, she's bummed. Uh, she puts this over here, or over here. It doesn't really matter. Either way, she's not going to get a match of bells or colors of colors or symbols so say la vie and uh, that leaves me with one um that with heck i'll just do that to make it even better it's almost perfect and then jen gets this which um yep doesn't really matter so you don't just start another one these would be, and these would be the new, these will be the new going into the next round, but each of us have now finished three sweaters. Any incomplete sweaters are gone. Boomsville. Our, our hand of cards and whatnot, they are also gone, gone, gone. Everything's going to be reshuffled. But now we score these sweaters. And I show, let's see, Uncle Thomas wanted this ugly beast. So this is worth two, plus it's got tree and tree. So this is worth five points to me. You're welcome, Uncle Thomas. This is worth two plus the snowman. So this is worth five. So I'm at 15 points. And this one is, is two plus one matching color is three. So um, five, 10, 13 points if I did that correctly. If not, check the Cleon subtitles because Paula will have you noted. So uh, we would keep track. And actually, it's adorable. The game comes with these very, very cool little scorecards. Or, you know, a, a pad of paper. He just gave me some temporary scorecards where you write for each of your three what your final score was, and then you can tally them up as you go. Really cute stuff. Really cute. All right, so I'd mark, I'd mark mine. Jen, and I think I was at 13. I've totally forgotten. Jen says she did do one super purple. So this is two for finishing it, plus all purple. So that's five. And I have lost Papa. Where did Papa go? Well, I know this was Papa's, and it's nothing else matching. So that was two. So this is five as well. And then this thing is a monstrosity that doesn't have three of a kind of anything. So this is only two. So Jen just made 12 points to my 13 points. If I could find Papa and prove that Jen made him happy. But I seem to have lost that because I'm losing my mind at the end of the first week of 
ugly Christmas sweaters. So now, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts of what Jen and I thought of the game, you can hit that eye up in the top right corner screen and go to those final thoughts in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.